Excellencies, um, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to, to our public uh, forum this morning on Thailand Myanmar. Uh, first, let us uh, invite the Dean, the Dean of uh, the Faculty of Political Science, uh, Dr. Professor A. Thanks, uh, Abhatana, to, to provide some uh, welcome remarks and then we'll proceed. Thank you, Chante. Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning to everyone and also welcome to today's uh, seminar on Thailand and Myanmar and how our two countries have we entwined past and chair future. Thailand and Myanmar really, uh, are really close in every sense of the word. Uh, we share the longest border with Myanmar. Our distance histories, as many know, were interlocking for centuries until the contemporary period from the late 19th century. We each went our own way, Thailand and Myanmar, and we suffer in different ways. We also fought against East Asia and have had conflict in the faraway past. I don't want to say that our collective past was lonely and present. We were liable to be true. But now, in the early 21st century, the opposite of our respective destinies have aligned in a way that we have never seen in the past. Thailand needs Myanmar, and Myanmar needs Thailand. Together, uh, we are a pivot and corridor that uh, connects uh, South Asia and Southeast Asia. In a decade's time, you can reach more than half of the world's population from Thailand and Myanmar within uh, five hours. It is time to charge our respective pathways in the 21st century and to ensure that they are mutually reinforcing. Our future will have to be shared and cooperative as much as our past was uh, confrontational and divisive. To do this, in a small way, ISIS Thailand, together with uh, Myanmar ISIS, have organized the first place and the, for the first time conference uh, today. The morning session here is uh, track two's endeavor, meaning that it is a joint discussion among think tanks, but it is open to the public too. I want to thank each of uh, participants. Uh, Ajahn Titinan and also uh, Kun Nguyen Mong Chai, uh, uh, the chairman of the uh, uh, Myanmar ISIS, for opening remarks later. I extend my thanks to His Excellency Kasik Pilong, uh, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Thailand, uh, Yu Kin Mong Lind, the Joint Secretary of uh, Myanmar ISIS. Dr. Kin Mong Nguyen, Senior Fellow of uh, Myanmar ISIS. Uh, Dr. Nalong uh, Pom Lak Thong uh, from neighboring uh, countries Development Cooperation Agency. Uh, Pikawi Chong Kit Thawon, Senior Fellow of ISIS. And Ms. Gwen Lobinson, uh, who is also the Senior Fellow and uh, Senior Asia Editor of uh, Nikkei ASEAN Review. Uh, thank you for all of you to, uh, for making uh, the time to be with us today. The Faculty of Political Science is also grateful to uh, Center for Humanitarian uh, Dialogue and Mr. Michael Watiostis uh, for uh, support and enable this uh, conference to take place. Last but not least, I also extend my thanks again to uh, Kuntawi Chongkit Thawon and uh, Ms. Gwen Lobinson for uh, uh, their initiation and uh, to uh, proceed uh, this uh, meeting. Uh, there will be many issues to discuss today. 
including the broad bilateral relationships and the trade and investment ties, uh, domestic politics, ASEAN and the major powers, how Thailand and Myanmar can maintain and capitalize on their upward trajectories in a mutually uh, supportive fashion is what we are interested in uh, today. Uh, let me uh, turn uh, the floor to Ajahn Jay for the opening remarks and also uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanik. Uh, this is a little bit out of order. Normally I would be the moderator, but I have to teach at 10. So now today, I have, uh, unusually, I, I'm giving a little bit of opening remarks. Uh, I want to really welcome uh, my colleagues from uh, Myanmar ISIS. This is the first time that they're in this building. Normally we would have this kind of conference in Yangon uh, at one of the hotels or at your institute. So it's a uh, you know, different territory, but great to have you here. Uh, the first time that we've had anything on track two, this is uh, known as track two, meaning the discussions between think tanks. Uh, we've had a number of track two within the ASEAN uh, context, but never a bilateral Thailand-Myanmar track two. So it's something that's very heartening to me, and I hope that we will have uh, more of it in the future, either there and here, perhaps uh, ro rotating. I want to thank uh, Kun Kui in particular. This is his idea. So he came to me and said, you know, we have we have to do this with uh, Myanmar ISIS. And I said, uh, yes, sure. But, you know, we have so many things going on now. I'm so full. I also have to teach two classes. Um, could you do it? So this is the first time that he's done all the kind of the heavy lifting. And, uh, and Gwen Robinson has pitched in instrumentally uh, to, to make it happen. Many issues today we will have. This is actually a day long, but the morning session is a public session. Uh, we're interested in a number of issues that you can also prepare your questions, uh, comments, if you'd like to talk about domestic politics, uh, communal violence, ethnic relations, um, major powers, geopolitics, uh, Thailand, Myanmar, within that larger frame. Uh, in addition, we will also have a, a closed door in the afternoon, which is not open to the public. In that discussion, uh, we will look at a number of issues bilaterally and also within the, the regional framework. Uh, so without uh, further ado, with now taking too much time, uh, I'm sorry that I, I have to go and have a class at 10 because we're getting close to the end of term, cannot miss another class. Uh, but you're in good hands. Uh, Gwen Robinson will take over. She will be the moderator in the morning and we have a good lineup. Uh, so thank you very much for joining. Thanks, Dr. Chijin Um You can go off to class when you want. <laughs> you have our permission. Um, Anyway, so today, as, as you know, we're here to talk about uh, Thai-Myanmar relations in a regional perspective. We have um, an excellent, excellent panel for that. Um, I couldn't think of a, a better one. Um, I won't waste much time on the introductions, but just uh, run through our uh, distinguished panelists. I'm terribly sorry. Um, uh, Chloe's just reminded me of a, um, an, an item on the agenda. I actually forgot the opening remarks by U Nguyen Mong Shane, the, uh, I'm terribly sorry, Chairman of the Myanmar Institute of Strategic and International Studies, uh, who I'll um, introduce just very briefly to say he is a long time former. Um, diplomat uh, and former ambassador, uh, Myanmar's ambassador to the UN in Geneva, extensive experience and uh, has joined MISIS uh, in uh, just the right era, I think, to put uh, as Myanmar goes out into the world. So, U um, Nguyen Mong Shane, over to you, please. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairperson. Uh, Excellency, uh, Mr. Kasit Biro, Professors Dr. Ake Tansu Watana and Professor Dr. Titinan Pongsida, dear participants, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to express my thanks to ISIS Thailand for hosting this Yama Thailand Dialogue and supported by the Center for Humanitarian Dialogue Singapore Office. I should also like to thank, in particular, 
to Kun Kavi Chong Kitabon and Dr. Michael Vatiotis for initiating today's event. While they were in Nebido last month, attending a UN sponsored seminar on preventive diplomacy. Today's theme, Entwined Past and Shared Future, Thailand Myanmar Relations in Regional Perspective, comes at an important juncture when both countries are adjusting to the changing political and economic landscape, both in the region as well as in the world. On the Myanmar side, we have Dr. Kemaunyo, senior member of uh, Myanmar ISIS, who is both a historian and archaeologist, and who still is a professor emeritus teaching international relations at the University of Yango. Included in the delegation is Usomin sitting over there, who owns the Mizima Media Company, and Ukemaule, retired diplomat of Myanmar Foreign Service, and serving as the Joint Secretary of Myanmar ISIS. I am quite sure that all these scholars would be able to contribute their knowledge, experiences, and wisdom in today's discussion. As for my own self, since I have a long experience and background working in the Boundary Division in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I would like to share with you my thoughts on boundary and border affairs between our two countries, especially in the afternoon session. Indeed, as the title of this dialogue suggests, being neighbors, Myanmar and Thailand are two countries having a long history of interaction since the times of ancient kings and until the era of modern history of the two nations. Sometimes such interaction has been negative and unpleasant, while at other times relations have been positive and fruitful. Looking forward to the future, our two countries share similar aspirations and hopes for enhanced relations for the friendship and betterment of our two peoples. As an example, I cite the Dawei Deep Seaport Project, which both Thailand and Myanmar are very much interested to cooperate in and achieve the completion of this task, which would undoubtedly promote the economic prosperity of both countries. Towards this end, both governments are trying very hard to attract investors from Japan to join in the project which is estimated to cost several tens of billions of US dollars. It also seems to us that the Japanese are interested to join in. Another partner for this project could also possibly be India, because I think the port of Mumbai and Dawei are just across the Rio of Bengal to the west and the east. And another uh, example that I'd like to uh, site is also the trilateral highway project between India, Myanmar, and Thailand. As Pro Professor uh, Dr. Dang Subhatana has just pointed out, uh, both our two countries are serving as uh, uh, countries uh, that interconnect uh, Northeast India and uh, ASEAN countries. In the ASEAN context, although Thailand is one of the original six members, and Myanmar, despite it becoming an ASEAN member at a later stage. It is trying its best to catch up together with Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam, the original six. Since its reforms during the past three and a half years, the GDP of Myanmar has reached an annual growth of around 7%. If Myanmar could sustain such a level of growth, it could become a middle level income by the year 2030, according to the ADP report. In future, Myanmar also aims and aspires to be one of the countries which could, provide, which could provide a leading role in the regional grouping. Toward the end of this year, as you all are aware, Myanmar will be holding general elections and the whole world is paying close attention on this election and uh, the outcome of the elections. The Myanmar people also expect the new government to continue the reforms and create better conditions for their daily lives. Recently, Myanmar government and the umbrella organization comprising the different armed ethnic groups have signed a draft agreement for a ceasefire. This ceasefire is subject to the acceptance by each and every armed ethnic group. This is the first time in Myanmar's post-independent history that such an achievement 
could be realized. Today's discussion on the relation between the countries will touch on these issues as well as other issues of common interest and concern. I look forward to candid and lively deliberations, and I wish the forum every success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Union uh, Mong Shain. Um, uh, you already conveniently introduced your uh, Myanmar colleagues, so maybe I, I, um, I won't uh, repeat that except to say that uh, we'll um, we'll start with uh, um, Dr. Kin Mong Yun. Uh, but first, I would like to uh, also introduce our other panelists to my right, um, who probably needs little introduction is. Kun Kasit Piromya, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs um, of Thailand, and also quite a scholar who lectures frequently on the region, um, most recently, uh, just a few weeks ago, at Chula. Um, and uh, to my left is uh, Kawi Tom Kitavon, again, needs little introduction. Uh, senior Fellow at ISIS and a columnist uh, read by, I'm sure, most people in this room. And uh, finally, making a very rare public appearance is Dr. Narom Pomlaktong from um, the Neighbouring Countries Development Agency, which, um, uh, unbeknownst, I mean, I've been remiss to miss the fact that this agency has been giving out soft loans to, to regional uh, countries for, is it 10 years now? Um, so Dr. Narong is heavily involved in um, some of the biggest and key uh, projects to enhance connectivity across borders in the region and is also, I note, a board member of the Dawei Special Economic uh, Zone um, Board. So uh, I'm sure he'll have lots of insights. He also has a very interesting presentation and we'll come to that after I think we'll start that end and uh, um, U Kim Mong Yun, would you like to begin or, or um, U Kim Mong Min? Uh, what I would like to ask is for each of the panelists to perhaps give, the, give us their short, a short view of how you see the key issues, the top challenges, uh, the pitfalls ahead and the uh, possibly the opportunities in what we're talking about today, which is Thai-Myanmar relations in a regional perspective. Um, and just to recap, that obviously, as uh, Dr. Titinan and uh, Dr. Aik touched on, um, spans everything from um, you know connectivity, the infrastructure push, to trade, um, peace and security issues, uh, the ceasefire, as we heard, uh, human trafficking, um, so I think the main thing is that the divisions, are, the areas are so big that, you know, perhaps you could give us your perspective, each of you, on how you see the broader regional uh, dynamic playing out for Thailand and Myanmar at the same time as these countries are struggling, as you said, uh, with their own domestic issues, the uh, very critical elections in Myanmar, and also in Thailand, as we all know, um, big issues to do with constitution and discussion of elections too, uh, whether they'll happen anytime soon or not. Um, but anyway, so perhaps um, um, a short preamble from each of you and a presentation from um, Dr. Narong, and then we can move into discussion. Please, gentlemen. The end there. No, I'm not a new, <laughs> I'm so old generation. Huh? But uh, anyway, uh, thank you very much, Gwen, for this uh, uh, chance to speak uh, to this uh, uh, distinguished um, audience. And uh, it's our pleasure to be here for the first time between uh, the meeting between uh, Myanmar ISIS and Thai ISIS. And uh, uh, I would like to give a few points of my... Uh, uh, I have prepared a paper on, the, on the, our future, the entwined past and shared future Myanmar-Thailand relations in a regional perspective. Uh, 
Uh, this ancient past histories of Myanmar and Thailand had, you know, like uh, Professor Tillinam uh, mentioned, uh, not so rosy, but full of animosities and clashes, especially between the ruling kings of those unfortunate periods. Citizens and ordinary people of both our countries had enough sufferings from those senseless fightings in the 17th century. Although we fully understand and empathize, <coughs> empathize with Thais on their feelings against Myanmar for destroying the ancient capital during the last war between Myanmar and Siam, that was in 1767, it is inappropriate, unproductive, and irreverent to bring the past animosities to this present 21st century. Today, we should leave all those bad feelings behind and look forward constructively together for our shared future. Old, outdated, and useless mindsets on both sides should be changed with new, modern, and forward-looking mindsets to be able to move ahead together for a brighter and better future in tune with rapidly changing world and regional situations and growing challenges around us today. Past is not to be clinging on to grow hatred, but to be studied and learned lessons from it to be able to avoid mistakes in the future. Today, more Thai friends are visiting Myanmar, especially on pilgrimage tours to visit our famous shrines, Buddhist temples, and historical sites in Myanmar. More people-to-people -people contacts are being established nowadays with increased frequency of daily flights between our two countries. Same sect of Buddhism <coughs> and similarities in our culture play a very important role and a very strong role in improving our people-to-people -people contacts now and in the future. Like all our other foreign visitors to Myanmar, Thais are very much welcome with open hearts and warm hospitality by the people in Myanmar. With the prospect of easing of visa restrictions in the near future on a reciprocal basis, we are sure to have more exchange of visits among our peoples and business communities and thus helping our bilateral trade to reach a much higher level. Therefore, we would like to urge our both governments to start visa-free travel as soon as possible. Myanmar now enjoys visa-free travel with six fellow ASEAN member countries, namely Brunei, Indonesia, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and the Philippines. Only Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore are yet to agree on it. With these countries, we understand that the issue of illegal migrant labors is the most challenging one to be dealt with before lifting out visa restrictions. It is well known fact that Myanmar labors are easy to train, hardworking, and productive and so they will be very useful for foreign employers if they are brought legally through proper channel, proper training and fairer terms and conditions. We sincerely hope that with the realization of ASEAN economic community after 2015 and under the ASEAN community spirit, this issue can be solved amicably between our respective member countries and Myanmar. Strong cultural links between young people and shared devotion on Buddhism between the older generations of our two countries will surely have better understanding, warmer friendship and closer cooperation between us in other areas and fields also. Recent successful visit of famous Thai singer Tong Chai to Yangon under fun and friendship experience exchange program was a shining symbol of shared culture values and close affiliation among our young people. We need to channel this, this closeness and friendship to other fields, projects in health, education, sports, anti-narcotics drive, etc., which can bring success also if our young people work together with complete understanding and cooperative with the voluntary spirit. As we share a long and porous border, Myanmar wants to cooperate more closely with Thailand on public health issues, infectious diseases control, <coughs> such as malaria, HIV, AIDS, etc., and in dealing with other equally important non-traditional security issues like drug 
trafficking, human trafficking, illegal logging, and illicit trade. Past experiences have shown that these issues cannot be tackled effectively without genuine cooperation, mutual trust, and true friendship between our peoples, especially among responsible authorities and law enforcement officers on both sides of our border. More young people from both sides learning each other's language and culture is also very important for our shared future. Myanmar under the new education law has opened up its education to the outside world and more and more international educators are coming into contact with Myanmar. We also wish to expand stronger relationship between the universities of our two countries and scholars <coughs> one of our institute's top priorities is to act as a bridge between learning institutions and scholars from abroad and Myanmar. In this field of education, Myanmar students need a lot to a lot of effort to catch up with the world, especially with the genuine help of persistent universities from fellow ASEAN countries like Thailand, Malaysia and Singapore. At present, nine military officers from Myanmar are attending a course in Thailand and four Thai military officers are studying Myanmar language at our Institute of Foreign Languages in Yangon. There should be more scholars, more exchange of scholars from both sides to learn each other's language and culture if we destined to move closely toward shared future and warmer friendship and better understanding. At the state or government level, our present working relationship is excellent and moving towards a right direction with several high-level exchange of visits from both sides. We are also happy to note that the two ongoing poverty alleviation pro projects under Mephalong Foundation under the Rao Patronage of Thailand are enjoying success. We need more projects like this in our border areas to be able to bring peace rural development and prosperity to our poor people. It is also heartening to learn that military personnel of both our countries are looking into avenues for cooperation in rural development along our common border. We should continue this right track to cooperation and collaboration for a shared future. Now, ironically, our two countries are also struggling with democracy, each going its own way to achieve one which is viable or suitable to its own peculiar circumstances. But we have the same fate of giving birth of democracy, child, wives, similar but different military midwives. It is still too early to say our children will survive in this difficult and cruel world. Myanmar democracy was born, but is still in an infant stage and need to be nurtured by proper and intelligent care. Hopefully, democracy for our Thai friends will be born stronger and healthier in near future and that baby will not be abused by disunity and quarreling among the Thai Democrats, our friends, Thai Democrats, again in the future. So we all wish you a very uh, good luck and all the best for democratic <laughs> future. Thank you very much. I give the floor to you. Thanks, Yuking Onlin, for nice insights. Um, which, shall we move there? Thank you. Thank you. May I express my thanks to having a chance of attending this forum. Thank you very much. I've been to Cholalongo University three, four times before on different occasions. This is the first of its kind of this type of forum. Well, I've been a professor for a long time. I talk too much. So give me early warning if I go beyond time. No. <laughs> <laughs> the topic is very pertinent and provoking. Two close neighbors with identical cultural background and close ethnic uh, relationship have been together in the, this peninsula of Southeast Asia for ages. The origin could not be correctly traced, to be sure, archaeologically or uh, historically. But the two countries are entwined in the past, present and future, not in the past, up present, future, see, always, see. <clears throat> 
And we, there's no doubt about it, in the past, our relations have been, it's kind of a sweet and sour relation, sweet and sour uh, dish, in Chinese dish, sweet sour. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Depends. This is quite understandable, not only between Thai and Myanmar, but also relations between other countries as well. In Europe, for example, England and France, Germany and Russia and so on. They also have sweet and sour relations between Japan and China also. This is, could be expected as if relations between the members of the same family, you quarrel, then you reconcile, you become friend again. So we need not go into detail and talk about these things. This is quite, quite natural, you can expect. But there are many periods and moments of good relation between the two countries. And we prove to each other mutually we need and we need to assist. Proving that a friend in need is a friend indeed. For example, the last five decades, when we were in the political hibernation, either by our own choice or imposed upon us, there was no contact with the outside world. The only contact was through Thailand. To go out of the country, we had to come to Bangkok airport, and from there we depart. Even today, you see, to other countries, for example, to go to India, New Delhi, because you come to Thailand, there's no direct flight. So that proved that in times of emergency, Thailand had proved a window to us. For that, we are very much thankful. We will never forget. And also, you see, I don't need to go into detail. It was Thailand which invited Myanmar to join ASEAN first. And uh, there are many reasons, external, internal, that the then government knew when about to join, but later he didn't say anything. So, but it was Thailand. Again, it was Thailand which made Myanmar rejoin ASEAN, and it was Thailand which opened our relation with the West like for example, Bimstead. It was Thailand that introduced Myanmar to be part of this regional organization, since Myanmar occupies most strategic position between East Asia, West Asia, and Southeast Asia. So we got to be very thankful to Thailand, the role it played in a very meaningful way at the time when Myanmar was in difficulty. We never forget it. So, let me quote one very good example of relation between the two countries in the past. That is about the, during the time of town group period, home survey period. Thai people knew Begu Andavari as home survey, and King Burinong Bayin now. He was called by the Thai historians as emperor of the ten directions. In good faith, this emperor tried to unite peninsula ASEAN countries into one country because they have a common background, common culture, common religion. In good faith he did, and to some extent he did succeed. If you come to Myanmar and visit Pago, you have reconstructed his home sovereign Bali city and his Bellies revived a campus of Tartu. You can see that. You can see many strong evidences of the, the way he did at that time. And then at that time, Thailand and Myanmar were really united. What happened later is another story. So this is the point we should never forget. And he was referred to, as I said, as the Emperor of Ten Directions very revered and very loved in the ASEAN countries. And we cannot finish 
you see, compiling and writing about our entwined past. Remember, history is not only digging up the past to learn good points and good lessons, but also to learn bad points and to avoid bad lessons. History also to build our present and to plan for the future, especially in this new 21st century we call the age of globalization. All of us are blessed with opportunities and beset with the many challenges. So we cannot afford to blame each other for what we have done wrong in the past. It is useless to go over the past. It won't do it much. So we leave all bad things behind and start with a clean sheet to maintain our present and build our, our bright future. We two countries, Thailand and Myanmar, have just celebrated our Sunkram New Year Festival, water throwing festival. We in we got the news this year. I was not here during Sunkram, but Thailand did a very good Sunkram this year, too, every year. So did we here too. But what is the meaning of Sunkram? It's just for the fun of throwing water at each other. The meaning is to clean our dirt and filth physically and to cleanse our spirit and mind spiritually. That's the idea. So we have celebrated that festival. Now we are New Year in both countries. So let us come out with a new spirit, cleanse mind and cleanse uh, spirit to start our relation for our future. Sharing the future. International relations are always linked, always shared. No man is an island. And even Lord Buddha said, no Buddha is enlightened without surrounding with the environment. So taking this, what Buddha said, and what is also uh, really true, the two neighbors should. It's the time that work together with a new mind, new mindset for the new generations. This is true of not only between Thailand and Myanmar, but also true of all neighboring countries, China, India, Bangladesh, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and all other countries, inclusive. Therefore, as you see, what I would like to emphasize is, you see, we should start a new career in our relation between the two countries. As my previous speakers have pointed out, there are many avenues, many ways of starting a new life. First with education, then culture, then etc. etc. And particularly I would like to emphasize with the new generations. You see, new generation and new leadership. Now in among the ASEAN countries, many leaders are of rather old age or middle age or uh, new middle age. New leadership are coming in. Leadership in the sense not only in political leadership but also in every field. And therefore we look, we depend upon upcoming generations. So we should train, give good new idea to the new generations as to how we can work out. We can hold another seminar of this kind regarding training of the new generations of Thailand and Myanmar and ASEAN countries that you do that. So uh, I can go on speaking. Personally speaking, I am now 85, quite old, see? And, but in my middle age days and younger days, I had welcomed many Thai VIPs, starting with Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Crown Prince. I welcomed him. I still got a photo photograph with me. I was showing him around the Shwedagon and Bagan, photographed together. Next, then Her Royal Highness, 
Princess Street Dome three times. First, at twice crossed the border, Chengdu. She was very young, very, very, uh, has some very active, and she still is active. And recently I read in the, in the Infrared magazine in the Thai, Thai Bona, a photograph, and she was still active, you see, I mean, regarding this matter. So, and uh, with regard to the king himself, I remember he attended the Sixth Buddhist Council uh, held during the time of uh, uh, Prime Minister Unu. I saw the king and the queen sitting together with our Prime Minister in the Gabai Caves. We still got the photograph. So these happy pasts are to be remembered and to be repeated again and again for the new generations. I can go on talking about this relation between the two countries. And it was Thailand who was always supportive of Myanmar. Whenever Myanmar is in difficulty, Thailand will come to our aid. So we never forget about it. Similarly, Myanmar is reciprocating in every way to Thailand. So with that, may I close my thank you. I can talk more later. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you, uh, Kim Myung Yoon, for that uh, fascinating insight into history and your tour guide activities around Shui Dagon with Thai royalty. Um, so I'd just like to turn uh, to our um, final, but uh, not least, Myanmar panelist, uh, Unyun Mong Shane and um, Unyun Mong Shane, perhaps also you could give us a few insights if you're talking about the key issues that you see in the both the bilateral relationship and the regional dynamic, how the rise of uh, these super regional bodies and uh, agreements such as AIIB or the advent of AEC will. Um, will or are impacting on both countries and their dynamic um, if you have thoughts on that and of course most of all the China factor which is a, a huge thing for both Myanmar and Thailand and the region um, so they're just a few thoughts but you may have your own uh, view so over to you please thank you uh, Madam Chair uh, well, actually, I'm not on the panel, but uh, as you invite me to uh, shed some uh, light on some main issues between our two countries, uh, I would like to also uh, give my thoughts on these issues. Well, uh, actually, uh, my colleague uh, Kumaul just touched on some of these issues. Uh, the most important one, I think, uh, which still is uh, uh, stumbling block between our two relations, countries' two relations, is the issue of the migrant labors. Because I think uh, uh, the migrant labors from Myanmar go mostly to uh, three countries in this region. They are Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. Out of the three countries, I think there are over 3 million migrant workers in Thailand, Myanmar migrant workers. Some are documented, some come undocumented. And uh, there have been uh, some uh, difficulties in managing these uh, laborers. I believe uh, there are about 300,000 migrant laborers, Myanmar migrant laborers in Malaysia, and about an equal number in Singapore. So, uh, since uh, Myanmar and Thailand share a long but porous land border, so there are quite uh, many migrant laborers, laborers who have gone uh, undocumented and undetected into Thailand illegally. There are also some who have come uh, with uh, proper documents, and uh, the treatment they get here in Thailand from the employers 
is sometimes uh, so appalling that uh, they have many, many uh, complaints from the migrant laborers that have gone unnoticed uh, to the Thai authorities. Now I think uh, we have a, 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 a labor attaches office in our embassy in Bangkok, which are attending to the needs of these uh, laborers. But still, since uh, the, the number of people coming to work here uh, in the millions, they cannot uh, tackle the issue effectively. Of course, uh, as Ukamale also uh, alluded, our country is uh, still very poor. 70% of the total population lives in the countryside. And according to the UN estimate, 26% of the rural people are below the poverty line. And President Thein Sein government has initiated at the national level a, a plan of action to eradicate or to, to mitigate this uh, poverty uh, in the country. They had originally hoped uh, to halve the 26% by this year to make the MDGs of the UN. But unfortunately, I think uh, poverty still persists and I am afraid that maybe we will not be able to reach that target. So I think uh, both governments are now working uh, at the labor ministry's level to look into the uh, issue of the migrants to be treated fairly by the employers. So this is one of the main issues that uh, affecting our relations. And the other one is human trafficking. Uh, there have been reports, and I've also seen some uh, these reports about uh, human trafficking gangs that uh, send small children from our country uh, to, to, to Thailand and especially to Bangkok uh, to become beggars in the streets. So I think this is this is also one issue uh, that we should look into and try to suppress the the city gates that have. Uh, engage in human trafficking activities, especially targeting uh, young children and young women who are sometimes forced uh, to, uh, into prostitution. The other uh, issue that I think, uh, I believe, uh, is important for our two countries to further look into is the border affairs uh, management along our very lengthy border of over 2,000 kilometers. Uh, our boundary between Thailand and Myanmar is not yet well defined because we have, especially for Myanmar, we have inherited this border from, from the British because at that time in way back in the 19th, late 19th century, the British and the Kingdom of Siam, they, they uh, demarcated uh, the boundary between the two countries. But now, uh, since uh, Myanmar is engaged in a national peace reconciliation process, and more and more armed ethnic groups have come into the legal fold, the border along our two countries is now rather stable and peaceful. So I think the we should, uh, both countries should look in, in the future into uh, demarcating uh, this border so we have a well-defined border and we could um, manage the border affairs more efficiently. As you know, Myanmar is uh, surrounded by five, five neighbors. Uh, to the west, we have Bangladesh. We have settled our border demarcation in Bangladesh. We are already a border treaty and a treaty to manage day-to-day -day border affairs. Next, we have a very long border with India also, over 1,600 kilometers long. Uh, most of this border has been settled. There is still a small stretch of about 100 kilometers that we still have to settle with India. And next, we have uh, our northeastern neighbor, China. We have, we have a very long border with China, over 2,400 kilometers. And that has been settled. 
way back in the 60s and we have a border treaty on that. And then we have Laos with, 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 with which we share uh, the Mekong River as a border. That border has been defined and also a treaty has been uh, concluded with Laos. So only remaining is uh, with Thailand. And also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the border with Thailand is also uh, particularly long for us, the second longest, in fact, more than 2,200 kilometers. So I think uh, uh, our two governments should look into this uh, issue and when uh, the time is uh, appropriate and convenient for, for both sides, I think we should take out the border. Because uh, from my experience, I know that there are a number of I think I should say several places along this border uh, that are claimed by both sides. So we can run into some difficulties trying to settle this border. The only uh, portion of the border that has been demarcated and well defined is uh, in uh, Ching Rai province, and, uh, which is corresponding to Tachi Lake uh, Township in Yama, in the Shan State, which consists of the uh, Mesai and number of rivers. That has been uh, settled way back in the 80s. But that is a very small portion. It's only about 50 kilometers. So out of this 2,000 kilometers, we have just settled only 50 kilometers. So I think we should give a try on this uh, issue. And as to manage the border affairs, I think uh, we have a mechanism known as the regional border committees. But these are headed by uh, the military commanders of the two countries. So I think here also uh, we should look into the civilian management of the border regions. We have a very comprehensive treaty that we signed with China and also with Laos uh, on the civilian management of the border, border uh, regions. So I think these are uh, some of the issues relating to the border that we could well look into the future and uh, try to have a well-defined border and also a uh, uh, comprehensive uh, border management agreement. And uh, regarding the AAIB, which uh, Madam Chair has just mentioned, uh, we are also the one of the founding members of this bank. Uh, out of the original 57, Nyama also signed the agreement uh, to be a party as a founding member. And uh, I think this is also related to the the Chinese initiative of the new maritime ship road. Of course, uh, our government has on two occasions expressed support for this uh, initiative of China. But on the other hand, we must also, I mean, take into consideration the concerns expressed by some countries regarding this new Chinese initiative. Uh, I think Vietnam, for one, is, uh, have some concerns and also India, as you well know, because uh, Chinese have this two oceans uh, strategy policy, and uh, Indians are quite concerned that the Chinese naval presence uh, will be becoming more frequent uh, by providing uh, naval uh, support to uh, merchant uh, ships flying from uh, China to Sri Lanka to Pakistan, Middle East, and to to Europe uh, in the by providing uh, so-called attacks from uh, pirates because they are known pirates of the shore of the of the coast of Vietnam uh, in the Malacca Strait and off the coast of Somalia. So I think uh, while uh, China is pushing this uh, new Silk Road for win-win situation for economic prosperity along the uh, for the countries along the route, as well as opening up for uh, cultural exchange, there are some countries that are, that have uh, some reservations and concerns, especially on security matters of this. So that is uh, one of the uh, viewpoints that uh, we at the Myanmar ISIS are looking at. And uh, the next year, I think the Madam Chair has uh, asked me about uh, 
our relations with, uh, with China. Uh, as you all know, uh, since uh, the military government took over in 1988, there was a suppression on the democratic uh, movement. And uh, since then, uh, the West uh, imposed a very strong sanctions on Myanmar. And uh, Myanmar had, uh, had turned uh, to China for support that it needed. So in the following years, until uh, the time of President Hussein Said's government coming into power, uh, we, have, we have been very close to China. China has supported us. Uh, not only in the political field, also in the diplomatic field, in the uh, in the international arena, and also uh, economically as well as militarily. But uh, when President Hussein Singh's government came into power and uh, Myanmar undertook the major reforms, both in the political and economic sectors, I think uh, the the space for other countries around the world become uh, more uh, open and so China has now uh, competitors uh, both in the economic uh, domain as well as in the other social and even uh, uh, political uh, field. Because I think uh, Chinese uh, strategic interest in, in Myanmar is mainly concerned with the three, three aspects. One is uh, because we share the long border, China is very much concerned that uh, this border must be stable so that uh, the peoples living astride the border in both countries uh, could be uh, could live in uh, peace and uh, in prosperity. Then the other number two strategic interest would be uh, energy Secure, securement from our country. As you all know, uh, the Chinese government uh, had uh, a big project attempt to generate hydroelectric power in the upper reaches of the Iravari River. But there was a huge public outcry. Uh, the, the, the agreement was concluded during the military government's time, and there was uh, not much of trans transparency so people didn't know what was going on. But when President Hussein Singh came into power, there was a huge public outcry from all walks of life that the president, uh, without giving any prior notice to the Chinese, had suspended this project. And I think the, uh, you know, the Chinese were quite surprised and of course also uh, quite displeased with our uh, president's uh, decision. So uh, we have some uh, uh, difficulties uh, in our political region with China, and recently the Kokan uh, armed group in the northeast, bordering the Yunnan province, that uh, region which used to be under the leadership of Po Jashe, who was living in Yunnan, suddenly uh, started to attack uh, government soldiers since. Uh, 9th of February. It's the the, the uh, attacks are still going on, and uh, this has been also uh, some uh, sticky point in in our bilateral relations. And recently, uh, as you may know, our air force jet had uh, dropped a bomb on the Chinese side by mistake and uh, killed some people. So, you know. Uh, the border became quite tense, and our Minister of Foreign Affairs to travel to China to resolve this issue. So, uh, both in the political and economic field, I think the uh, Chinese are finding that they have, they have more competitors uh, with the normalization of uh, U.S. Myanmar relation. Also, the U.S. President also, I think that also uh, China is uh, rather concerned that it may affect its uh, strategic interests. The other, uh, the third main strategy is on China is, of course, to gain access to the sea. Yunnan province is landlocked and one of the uh, lesser developed provinces of China. So uh, the nearest 
uh, route to the sea should be what through Myanmar. So uh, these three uh, main strategic interests of China uh, are there, and uh, the normalization of our relations with the West and especially with the U.S. I think uh, the Chinese may have some concerns that that these interests are uh, compromised. So now, uh, of course, the Chinese, uh, both at the government and the track two level, are trying to find ways and means to, again, improve the relations. And there's also a lot of uh, anti-Chinese public sentiment in the country at the moment. They know it very well, and they are now uh, using uh, all, uh, at all fronts, the soft diplomacy uh, to gain win back the hearts and minds of the public at large. So this is, uh, in general, uh, my, con my uh, thoughts on the main issues between Thailand and Myanmar, and also the regional, like the AIB, the Maritime Civil Road, and bilateral relations between China. Thank you. Thank you very much, you and you, Mom Shane. Uh, we've decided that uh, we will have our coffee break now and return with our um, <laughs> um, with our uh, Thai panelists uh, in uh, 15 minutes. So, if you'd uh, all like to go and have some coffee and come back in 15 minutes, thank you.